When you have a typical electric fry pan like this, a problem that many people have is controlling the temperature in an accurate fashion. The temperature is either way too hot and it's burning stuff, or it's not hot enough and it's not cooking stuff. The fault partly lies with the design of the thermostat just here. Trying to get just the right setting, it's either too cold or it's too hot. I've set up a small demonstration. Um, it doesn't show it perfectly, but it shows it using water. It's not possible to get a, a even simmer in the water. So I've just got some water in here and I'll show you what, I'll try to show you what I mean. As you can see in the demonstration, the fry pan is now boiling. If we adjust the temperature control down, it'll just stop. And so it's gone from a, a high boil to nothing. So I only just turn it down a little bit and it's just nothing. And you have to wait and eventually it'll boil again and, it, and you get this uneven boiling a lot or well not boiling at all. Well, I've got something that, that can fix this problem. So that's the, we'll stop the demonstration there and then, and then we'll plug it in and try it out. So we have our external control box right here. That's gonna help us to control the temperature of the fry pan so it's nice and even. This will um, display in the water, the water will gent gently simmer and it won't stop and get to nothing and then go to a lot. And um, this translates into really easy to cook like um, fry things and cook pancakes and all sorts of things like that. They cook nice and evenly without burning or being too cold. So we'll plug this in and show you. You turn the fry pan up to full power because this little box is going to control the energy that flows to the pan and this controller is effectively not going to do anything anymore. I'm not on high but I'm up near high. Just set this setting here. As you can see the water is starting to boil. And now the energy controller is cut out and the boiling has dropped down. Now it's cut back in again and the, there's still a little bit of a simmer happening and it's going to pick up again and it doesn't, before it gets time to get to a, a fast boil, it'll cut out again, keeping a nice even simmer. So that's working perfectly. So that's our external control box and um, we can use to use the electric, ba a cheap basic electric fry pan and it do a much better job than the one that comes with the fry pan. Um, very simple to make, not expensive. Um, people like to use electric fry pans outside or if you go camping, it's good for camping. Um, so um, it makes it much easier to cook with. I'm now going to give you a brief demonstration on how to construct a, a basic energy regulator or simostat for your electric fry pan. This is not an exhaustive instruction um, or um, tutorial on how to make it, but it's just a brief overview um, so that you can um, give it a go if you do know what you're doing. You have to be careful um, because it's using 240 volts and 240 volt is dangerous and will kill you. So definitely make sure that nothing's plugged in and definitely make sure that you do know what you're doing. Things you'll need is a, a flex and plug cord, which you can cut off any old appliance. It needs to have an earth, has to have an earth and the active and neutral. And it just needs to be 10 amp. Uh, a PVC enclosure, um, which I've got here. I've marked out, I've marked and drilled out the holes already. In the top we've got the holes for the energy regulator, the hole for the knob to come through, and this is the energy regulator, and it's got two little um, notches, these holes here hold the energy regulator in place so it doesn't turn around. 
and the, one, the other end it's got um, the cape the hole for the cable to come through and to hold it in place we're using a, a cord grip which is this little thing here which goes around the cord like so like that and then it goes through and pushes pushes in, in through this hole and locks locks the cord into place so that's the cord grip and the cord attached in the other end we've got the cutout for a panel mount GPO or a PowerPoint outlet um, that's this thing here and it, and it has the little panel mount section and it's got a notch that little notch just there holds it in place to stop it from spinning and that little notch is just that little notch in the box just that tiny one at the top so that goes in place like that like so and then the um, back the terminals will screw in through the back We've got some wire that we'll need, two pieces with some 6.4 mil crimps. I've used blue, but a red would have been better. I just didn't have any. Um, that's the the colour determines what site for what size wire it's for. And brown is active and goes to the active terminal. Blue is neutral and goes to the neutral terminal. And the earth that comes from the the flex and plug cord comes straight through and goes through onto the onto the earth terminal of the PowerPoint. So we'll attach um, these cables now and screw the terminal on the back of the PowerPoint. So the, the earth goes straight through, the blue goes to neutral. The brown goes to active. And that screws onto the back of the fitting. Like so. And then you have your energy regulator or um, a, a simmer stat. And that controls the power that goes flows through the cord and into the electric fry pan. It uses a ratio of time on to time off. Inside is a little element that heats up and, and, it's, and, and it's basically if you have it near high, it's on for a period, of, a longer period of time than if it's on low. This on the back here, it's got a pilot terminal, which we're not using if we wanted a light. It's got the phase terminal, which is the power in, which we are using. So the power in comes from the cord and it's got the neutral terminal, which is just a linking terminal where the two neutrals go to. And there's the load terminal, which, got, which is the brown wire that goes to the power point. So we're gonna plug them in now. And they're just little tabs, 6.4 mil tabs that these tab connectors go onto. And then we take the lock ring off and insert the energy controller into the lid. And make sure that the locking keys line up through the holes. And secure it like so. And screw the lid on. And then our knob fits on there like that. So that is in the off position. So the only thing we have to do now is put some markings on it, which we'll do later. Once we've um, given it a bit of a test run, we can put some markings that, of settings that we want to want to remember. So that's how you make it. It's very simple. It's not waterproof. It's essential that it's wired correctly. So you must know what you're doing when it comes to um, wiring things and it should never be plugged in while you're working on it and it should be fully protected from accidental contact once it is completed so that you can't accidentally touch anything live but that's how you can make it um, 